Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Zenith 750 Super Duty Build. I have a lot of video clips of stuff I've been working on and somehow in this video, I have to figure out how to organize them into a somewhat coherent video. The first thing I'm going to show you is how I made these pieces here, which actually consist of three separate pieces all riveted together with a bunch of nut plates. These are kind of the side parts for the armrest for the third seat in the back. So I guess the first part of the video is let's build two of these. The first thing I'm doing is using this countersinking tool in my drill to countersink the holes for the nut plates that will get riveted to this piece. Sometimes this countersinking tool can leave a little bit of a jagged edge. So I use the, the deburring tool to clean up the edge. And then with each hole, I put in a rivet to make sure that it is uh, countersunk far enough. On these holes on the bottom, I noticed that I can't use this because the metal part here hits the bottom and I can't get it, uh, I can't get it into the hole. It's not centered on the hole. So for these, these two or four holes on the bottom here, I'm just countersink them, countersinking them with my deburring tool. You can see here, I've done this one already. And what I do is I just put it in there and I want to make sure it's the rivet or the, um, the countersink tool is as, about as 90 degrees as I can get it. Like I don't want to do it this way or this way or this way. I want to make sure it's actually going straight on like that. And then you just spin it about 18,000 times. And you'll get a perfect countersink. And then I always test it with the rivet to make sure the rivet sits flat in there. On this one here, it looks like I might have to go just a tad bit more. I don't want to go too deep, but I don't want that rivet sticking out either. So we'll do that. Put her back in there. There, that's about perfect now. So that's what I'll do for all four of these holes on the bottom. Then this piece will be done and ready for primer. Okay, these four holes on the bottom are done, and I lied. This is not ready for primer yet because I forgot. Now I have to open up these holes here because there's a, with a nut plate rivets, there's a 3 16 bolt that goes through there. So these holes in the middle here for all of the nut plates that go all around here, I have to open up two 3 16 And one of the things I wanted to show you is, so all these holes now are drilled out to 3 16 and here's a 3 16 an AN3 bolt. You know, notice when I try to put the bolt through the hole, the threads will go in fairly easy, but you notice the, the shank or the other part of the bolt doesn't want to go in there. I mean, you can push it in. And then the, but the problem with that is when you have another piece of aluminum on top of here and you're trying to get in here, it can be really tight to get in. So on the, the aluminum that the, nut plate is riveted to, I always open up the center hole uh, one size bigger than 3 16 And that just gives the bolt a little room to get in there and it fits a lot nicer that way. So once you actually have your nut plate on here, it'll be a lot easier to actually get your bolt in there. Well, I have one structure done here. I have the, the two pieces riveted to the ends here. Everything is done with flush rivets, and that is because there is a plate that screws onto here. This is that plate. Once it's in the airplane, this cover goes on here like this, and that's why there's nut plates on there is because this is just screwed on so that you can remove this, and there's some flight control connections down in here that uh, you'll have access to when that's removed. So these parts are ready to go. There's three parts here. I will get those riveted, and then uh, I guess they're ready to put in the airplane. However, one of the things I'm really trying to think about now and decide on what to do is when to paint the inside here. With my cruiser, 
I waited till the entire fuselage was built and then I primed and painted the inside. But what I'm thinking is, if I can prime the rest of this, like the bulkhead and everything else that's in here, and then even just paint it as it is right now, just like this, it'd be a lot easier to get in here with a paint gun and get around and get everything without the front half of the fuselage on here. So, you know, and then once the front fuselage is on, I can mask off the whole back here and then prime and paint the front part separate. And I think that would work, but at this point, I'm just not sure yet. This bulkhead in the back is not riveted on yet. You can see it's just clecoed in. So I can still take everything apart. And I may do that. I may prime and paint the rest of this, prime and paint that bulkhead uh, and get everything done and painted on the back half and then join it to the front, make all the connections and then paint the front. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. That's my plan right now. I just have to uh, kind of think about it a little bit more and see if that would actually work or if that would be a better way of doing it. So for now, I'm going to eat lunch, and when I come back, I will rivet that together. By the way, if you were wondering why I have the cowling off of the cruiser, I noticed I had a little tiny oil drip that was coming from like this part of the cowling and dripping down, and I wanted to see where it was coming from. So I took the cowling off, and what I discovered is there's a little tiny drip on the oil plug, and I tightened it just a little bit yesterday and now it looks like it's dry. So it was just dripping just a little bit from here, coming down on the cowl and then flowing backwards. <laughs> so anyway, I took the cowling off to look for that. And it's always, I have 62 hours on here now, I think. So it's, it's just a good idea to take the cowling off. And since it's a fairly new airplane, I do like to go over everything and just make sure everything's good and tight. Nothing's loose, nothing's vibrating, nothing's broke. All the connections are still made. So everything looked good. It was just that one little leak on the oil plug from the last time I did an oil change. So anyway, that is the story with the cruiser. All right, after my lunch break, it's back to work. I'm using my rivet gun here uh, and a steel backing plate to buck these countersunk uh, rivets. All right, next up is the forward fuselage. I have it moved up to the workbench and I'm gonna show you some work that I've done up front here. And other than that, really all I'm doing is just getting it ready for primer and paint, which is just kind of touching up some of the, the burrs on the holes, sanding some edges smooth uh, and things like that. So let me show you what I've done up front. The first thing I'm doing is removing these rudder pedal brackets and these brake cylinder brackets because I want to clean them up and paint them separately from the interior of the fuselage. Now this isn't necessary at all, but I've chosen to drill out some rivets and remove these stiffeners from the inside of the forward part of the fuselage. Here's what it looks like once it's removed. I do like how Zenith or Zen Air in Canada that builds this does use the, uh, whatever corrosion protection this is, if it's Cortec or some other product, but it's really nice. The holes look like they're all deburred. I, I only feel one, one burr on this hole right here. So it looks pretty good, but the main reason for taking this off is I can prime this and maybe even paint it separately. Um, and I think it's just easier to do. It just lets me clean up all this extra corrosion protection. You can see on the other side how nice it looks after it's all removed. I can prime and paint everything separately and then rivet these back on and I think it'll look a lot better. Well, you can see the part on the left has just been removed. The part on the right is after I've polished and buffed out the edges. And you can see the difference here and why I wanted to do this. On these pieces, you can see this edge, this edge, and this edge here are pretty rough. And you can see on the piece on the left, after I've polished it, you also notice the corners I've rounded off. These parts are much better now. And this is what they look like after they're primed and painted. Once the interior of the fuselage is primed and painted, I can bolt these back in place. Well, speaking of primer and paint, most of the parts 
In fact, all of the parts on my Super Duty, the steel parts, will be powder coated. So this torque tube is powder coated, and then I had some other parts powder coated. In the airplane here, the, this other torque tube and then the flat motor bracket, it's all powder coated. But the exception would be these push rods. I primed and painted these because they're easy to do. And the reason I did that is I had a buddy of mine who's an a and who's restored two airplanes, an Aztec and a Mooney. And he removed his landing gear and, you know, cleaned up the steel and then primed and painted the, his landing gear. And, you know, 10, 15 years later, the, the gear still looks awesome. Uh, there's very few, if any, paint chips in it. Uh, it just looks great. It's a really tough paint. And so he recommended this paint here which is available at Walmart. It's just Rust-Oleum professional grade. Uh, so this is the primer and this is the paint. It's the same stuff I've used on these little brackets I just showed you, except obviously these are black uh, and these are aluminum also. But uh, so anyway, yeah, I painted my push rods. They don't get seen, there's no wear on them. So I'm not worried about it, the paint, if it's not as tough as the uh, the powder coating, but it worked great. They look absolutely perfect. The only difference I noticed between the paint and the powder coating is the paint just isn't quite as shiny as the powder coating, which obviously doesn't matter because these are kind of buried back into the fuselage. So and one of the things we did notice with this paint though is the can says it takes 24 hours for them to dry, uh, which is true, but we noticed that it, it actually takes a couple of weeks for this paint, to, it seems like, to really fully harden. And after it is fully hardened, it's, I don't know if I want to say it's, it's as tough as powder coating, but it's, it's really, really a tough paint. Uh, you don't really have to worry about, you know, damaging it or having it chip off or anything, especially on parts like this that really don't get any, uh, you know, there's no, they're not rubbing anything, they're not touching anything. Now for things like the seat backs and things like that, they'll definitely be powder coated because it is, you know, powder coating is almost bulletproof. Um, so anyway, everything's powder coated, like I said, except my push rods. Let me show you quickly how I did those. You know, every time it seems like you hold a steel part in your hand and then you look at your hand and your hand is all black. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if that's a coating that's put on the steel to protect it from rusting or, or what, but uh, I think that needs to be removed before you prime and paint parts. So I had this little sanding sponge laying around and I decided to see how that worked. So I just used that and I went around the tubes and removed all that black stuff. And of course, cleaned up the the steel I used just alcohol uh, and you can see here the difference between the regular part and then after I've cleaned it up I taped off the two ends and I took it over to my professionally made paint booth here and sprayed it with primer and then uh, white paint now for today's work I am working on getting this torque tube installed into the fuselage because I think once that is installed in there, then I can join the front half to the back half. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Now, anybody that's built a high wing Zenith knows that these bearing blocks are extremely tight on here. If you can even get yours on, you'll find that it's almost impossible to actually rotate this in this bearing block. And I had the same issue with my cruiser, and I'm gonna show you next how I fixed that. Well, what has to happen to make these fit nice is you have to open up this hole. It is just too tight the way it is right now. I can get this on barely, but if I do use some force and press that on the end here, it's literally almost impossible to move this. Uh, so the way I open that up is with this little sanding drum right here, or wheel or whatever you call it. And uh, what I do is I just take this around here like this and just kind of polish the, uh, the inside until it opens up just a a hair uh, and then it fits actually pretty nice. I've already done this one here. It fits on here nice. It's not loose. It's still a little bit tight, but plenty uh, acceptable. So let me show you how I do it. And all I'm doing, if you can hear me, is I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on here and 
just letting the sanding just do its job. And I just rotate the block around that disc and it just kind of polishes that inside or opens it up just enough to make it fit nicely on the torque tube. So this nylon block fits much better now. It's still fairly tight. It's not loose, but it's not extremely tight either. I think it's just perfect and will work really well. Now building the rest of this is pretty easy. There's just four bolts that go through the, the blocks and some uh, nuts and washers on the back. Just like that. I'll put the nuts and washers on here and uh, these will be done. Here's what it looks like installed in the airplane. You can see over here, those blocks will also rivet to a vertical channel that's going to go there. And I guess that's probably the next piece I need to put in. But right now, it's looking good. All right, guys, I have a million other things to do today, so I think I'm done in a hangar. So I'll end the video here. Thank you for watching. I always ask, make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you don't mind. Subscribe if you haven't, if you want to keep following the progress of this airplane. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.